Welcome to our presentation today of our paper, Supervised Adaptation of Sequence-to-Sequence -sequence Speech Recognition Systems Using Batch Weighting. Um, today, um, Christian Huber and Joan Hussein will bring you uh, the contents of this uh, paper and give you some explanations on the research that we have done. The paper itself is work of uh, several people, including Christian Huber, Joan Hussein, uh, Tuan Nam Nguyen, Kai Hang Song, myself, Sebastian Stüker, and Alex Weibel. The uh, research that we're going to present was uh, done within the context of two large-scale projects. One project is a German Ministry of Science funded project called Removing Language Barriers in Treating Refugees or short Relator. And the second one is also a Ministry of Education sponsored project called Organic uh, Machine Learning. The project Relator is um, all about translating dialogues between German speaking psychiatrists and Arabic speaking uh, persons that are potentially uh, patients. It is a screening process in order to potentially detect psychological pro uh, problems in uh, persons. And the second project, Organic Machine Learning, revolves around developing techniques for lifelong learning. Uh, for example, for natural language processing, but also for robotics. These two projects fit together very well because lifelong learning is all about being able to continually learn to new circumstances, for example, when new vocabulary arises or when the domain uh, shifts in which the system is being deployed. And the domain that we are now working with in Relator is a very special domain. We have to translate diagnostic interviews between doctors and patients. And there is very little, if no data at all, to actually uh, adapt uh, the speech recognition systems to these very specific domain. And today, most speech recognition systems that are being deployed and the ones that give the best performance are end-to-end -end speech recognition systems. And for them, the adaptation to new domains is especially challenging since very often one normally needs end-to-end -end data that is transcribed speech in order to be able to adapt. And adaptation solely based on text is still an open research question. When we're talking about domain, we are not talking about domain in the term of uh, topic, as it is sometimes used in literature, but we are using the term domain in its broader sense. So we are here actually looking at very different uh, dimensions uh, according to which we can adapt our uh, speech uh, recognition systems. Um, for example, it can be the topic and the vocabulary of a, a specific task. For example, when it comes to the uh, psychiatristic dialogues, it can be special terms that are being used in the questions or special answers given by the uh, potential patients. So that covers domain and vocabulary, but it can also, for example, be accent. So uh, different speakers of a language might have different accents. And this can be very prominent in Arabic because Arabic actually is a family of languages that consists of many, many different dialects that can vary um, uh, a lot. And when people are speaking modern standard Arabic, the sort of high Arabic, they might bring accents with them depending on which dialect of Arabic is actually their natural dialect. So the adaptation to accent is also an interesting topic and an interesting dimension along which we want to adapt. And in this research, we have deployed a technique called mini batch grading in order to adapt different speech recognition systems in different languages uh, according to these different dimensions of uh, adaptation. And we are doing these adaptations with very li little limited amounts of adaptation data. So our premise is that we have speech recognition systems that were trained on large amount of out of domain data and are then being adapted to small amounts of in domain uh, data. For example, data that could be uh, annotated by users that are using the system in the desired domain so that we here come to a scenario where we are actually being able to do lifelong learning from small amounts of hand corrected domain adaptation data that we might obtain during the lifetime, during the deployment of a speech recognition system. Thank you, Sebastian. We are using in our paper the batch weighting method 
which is inspired from machine translation from the paper by Wang et al. Instance uh, waiting for neural machine translation domain adaptation, which will contain also uh, which contains also other methods we tested such as domain weighting and sample weightings. Um, we will publish the results of, the, of these methods, the master thesis of uh, the co-author Kai Hang Song, uh, and also other methods like data selection. Thank you, Shuan. I will now explain the batch weighting a little bit more in detail. The idea is to take the training data in each mini batch as a combination of out of domain and in domain data, where we call in the following out of domain data a large data set on which the baseline system is trained. And in the in domain data, we call a small adaptation set, which is used to adapt the system to a new domain. And yeah, this the mini the batch rating uses training data from the out and in domain data sets and we introduce a hyperparameter a hyperparameter called out of domain ratio where um, the out of domain ratio is the number of tokens from a mini batch from a, from the out of domain divided by the whole number of tokens in the mini batch so um, when for example when the ratio is zero in that would correspond to fine tuning the model and a ratio of one would correspond to only train with the out of domain data. Yeah, uh, now the Arabic uh, data. Um, the data we are use here is the MGB2 multi-general broadcast from Al Jazeera channel. The data for training consists of about 1,200 hours of broadcast videos and um, the many questions and answers as in-domain training data are recorded with uh, our tools, uh, doctor and text, uh, as cited in the paper. The participants reads, uh, read the uh, mini questions with their mobile telephones. Uh, the questions are from the uh, psychological interview mini um, and give free answers which are transcribed automatically and corrected manually uh, with our tool doctor. Um, the, uh, the test set now, the Al Jazeera M uh, MSA two hours, contains uh, the first two hours modern standard Arabic utterances which, uh, without dialects from the MGB test set, which contains about 10 hours uh, MSA modern standard Arabic and dialects. Then uh, the mini question, uh, the mini answers and questions by one speaker, uh, to uh, 32 minutes, uh, 42 minutes, and uh, 15 minutes. Um, now to the results of our uh, model of our um, system. So the um, we are use we, we use an LSTM based model which contains uh, an, consists of an encoder and decoder with attention. The encoder begins with uh, two layers uh, convolution neural network, um, followed by six layers uh, LSTM, and the decoder consists of two layers unidirectional LSTM, followed by the scale dot um, product attention, the, the decoder uh, encoder attention. So all the results in the tables, if not mentioned, otherwise are the water rate. So as we see in the table, we obtain the best results when we train the whole model since we have uh, audio channel variability for recording with different mobile devices as we mentioned in the data slides. Uh, slide. Uh, so it makes sense to uh, retrain the, 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 the encoder also and uh, not freeze it. So we have better uh, performance, better, better results if we not freeze the encoder. Um, the fine tuning where we use only the in domain data, uh, about three hours of mini question and answers, improves over the in domain data as we see. Um, but the model suffers from the catastrophic forgetting here, 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 and here. Um, 
but the uh, but with batch weighting we we don't have that problem the uh, out of domain test set the results uh, remains almost the same we have also here uh, very good re good results on the mini questions the mini questions is worth to mention that the questions are the same in the training and in the test set but with, but, uh, with different speakers and uh, we want to or fit to these questions because in the uh, psychological interview uh, for example we have the same questions uh, in the in the, in the, uh, in the interview so we want to overfit without um, um, forgetting the out of domain data or the, or, or make the uh, our model worse for uh, for other uh, scenarios or other data so we have 3.8 which is uh, considered very good results and uh, as i say we uh, said when we uh, freeze the encoder, we get uh, worse results because of the kind of variability. And um, also, if we freeze all the layers except uh, the softmax layer, we have even uh, a little bit worse uh, results. So now to the German data with Christian. Yes, um, for, for the German data, we use um, the, the training set has um, 433 hours of speech, where the speech is from the European Parliament, radio news and lecture. And um, for the um, adaptation data sets, we did the same as for the Arabic data. We collected um, um, mini questions from the same domain as for Arabic. Um, almost four hours and furthermore we also um, recorded a new words test set to evaluate the performance of the um, adapted system to recognize ver new words of the target domain. I will explain this a little bit more in detail. So this test set um, is um, recorded by taking words of the target domain the, which the baseline system doesn't recognize correctly and to prevent um, the system from just um, overfitting to these exact um, sentences we put the, the, these new words in another sentence so into other context. Then um, we want to evaluate how the system is able to recognize specifically these new words. Therefore, we calculate an accuracy um, of the recognized words only. So um, the, this um, new word accuracy, how we call it, is the number of new words which are recognized correctly by the system divided by the whole number of the new words. Okay, now let's come to the results. Um, for the German system, we use a transformer-based encoder-decoder model. So um, the encoder consists of eight layers and the decoder of four layers. And um, the transformer um, system um, uses um, self-insourced attention layers to um, process the data. Um, we see um, that the baseline system is, uh, has on the test set a worse accuracy than for the um, Arabic um, than the Arabic baseline system. This is um, due to the fact that we only have approximately a third of the data available in German compared to Arabic. And when we look at this third column, we see that when we adapt the system on the on this um, mini questions, um, and the uh, word error rate um, decreases, and um, also on the out of domain data, this uh, suggests that um, the adaptation data helps the system to also improve on the um, out of domain test set. And maybe there is, could also be a better point of stopping the baseline training to um, obtain similar results. Then when we look at the 
into, uh, into main test set, so the mini question test set, we see that um, we improve from the baseline um, by adapting and and when we um, when we train the full model, we get as best a word array 28, 21.8%. When we freeze the encoder, we, it's a little bit worse. And when we only train the um, softmax layer, it's again a little bit worse. So similar results than for Arabic. When we freeze more, we get a little bit less uh, performance. But um, in all of this um, third and fourth columns, we see that um, the batch weighting outperforms the fine tuning. Then um, we also, as I mentioned, we also evaluated this new word and test new word accuracy. And this is. Um, as it is an accuracy, we, we want to have it um, maximized instead of the word error rates over here. And, and when we first look at the baseline, we see that um, it has scored 32%. Um, so this is relatively high um, considering that the, uh, this new word test set um, is based on words the baseline system doesn't recognize in the mini question. Um, this is due to the fact that, um, so this value is rather high due to the fact that um, in the mini questions, there are many um, enumerations of, um, for instance, um, drug name. And when we put this into other contexts, um, we um, we split this enumerations into multiple sentences. Therefore, it is a little bit easier for the system to recognize this, um, these names. Then when we adapt, um, when we um, look at the um, new word accuracies on, for the adapted system, and um, they improve um, for when we adapt the full model. Again, when we um, freeze the encoder, it's a little bit worse. And for the, when we only train the softmax layer, um, the fine tuning scored worse again, but the batch rating um, got um, a little bit better than when we only freeze the encoder. Then um, another um, thing we tried is to reduce the time needed for the adaptation. So um, as we see in this, um, here, B, um, we tried uh, or we took the output of the softmax uh, before the softmax layer and cached it so that we don't need to um, give the data through the encoder decoder, but then um, store the, these out, this output of the decoder before the softmax layer to improve speed. Um, and this is we can do when we only train the softmax layer. And um, we see that this um, method has similar, um, as expected, similar performance than uh, C, um, but it's considerably faster. Then um, what we also tried is to um, extend the model um, after the decoder and before the softmax layer, and we added a language model on top. That so that's basically um, we added another decoder layer, but without the, this new layer has no source attention. That's meant with the language model, and we added this on top. And what we saw is and the time to adapt is um, is longer than before because we train more weights but um, we get a better um, um, accuracy on this new word test set. We also tried um, language models with, with more layers, but did, that did not improve the performance. Then um, for the English system, the data, 
here um, we use we have almost 800 hours of um, speech data fr um, from the corpora how to and Tevium, and we have multiple adaptation sets so um, first for the topic adaptation we use the ATIS um, uh, ATIS data set that's almost four hours long um, from 36 speakers and um, it contains hypothetical travel planning scenarios then for the other um, experiments we conducted and um, for the um, accent adaptation we use the data set, uh, data set we have a data set for japanese accent um, this is almost five hours long from one speaker. Um, a student of us um, collected this data. And then we have a multi accent data set. There um, we have almost nine hours of speech um, from 39 speakers. And this was um, collected from a conference. So this data is used um, for adapting or training the English system. So the results are also consistent for English, where we obtain the best result when training with batch weighting, with almost no forgetting when training the full model. We obtain 4.4 word error rate uh, with 63 minutes duration. Um, now uh, we have the word error rates with different ratios. With zero, as Christian just said, it's only the fine tuning without uh, uh, out of domain data and one uh, ratio one is 100% out of domain data and somehow here in between we have a value of the optimal ratio that we should find now we want to show some statistics about the rewards in the training sets so we want to find out if there is a correlation between the frequency of words and the, in the training data and their recognition. Um, for the word with uh, zero occurrence in the out of domain uh, set, which is training set of the baseline, um, the baseline recognizes few words. Nevertheless, um, we um, because we use sentence pieces in the output we don't have the out of vocabulary problem um, with the batch weighting more words are recognized however not all words even if they are they have high in domain frequency like here for example um, and for a cure for a frequency of one in the out of domain we have, for example, here, none of the word is recognized by the best model, but the most is recognized, are recognized. And here, so we notice that not all of uh, the words are recognized by the batch weighting, and it's not perfect for the new words problem or the rare words problem. Okay, now to the results for the non-native English adaptation, so the accent adaptation. And as for English, uh, for, as for the Arabic system, we use for the non-native English system a LSTM-based sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. And additionally, to the experiments before, we froze the decoder and because we adapt to accent and not to topic or new words like before. Then um, what we um, um, got as results is that um, the baseline system has 7.8% word error rate and the adaptation on the out of domain helps actually the, to reduce this word error rate. Um, this is possibly due to the more var variability of the accent um, data. Then um, when we look at the test, the Japanese accent test set, we see that um, the um, adapted systems work better, but um, when we 
freeze the encoder, this actually does not work um, that well. So for an accent adaptation, um, one should not freeze the encoder, but um, freezing the decoder is actually um, okay. And the accuracy is um, almost the same as, or the word array is almost the same as for the for tr when training the full model. Then on, um, on the multi-accent test set, we see, and th this is actually a harder test set because there are more speakers. And we see that um, here fine tuning works um, a lot better than, uh, uh, batch rating works a lot better than fine tuning um, compared to the um, Japanese accent test set where, where they are approximately e uh, even. So as a short conclusion, we see that the batch weighting delivers uh, better uh, results for all the language we, uh, we studied, uh, Arabic, English, and German. And um, we, for the future, we, um, we can uh, test for one language or for two languages um, by, with different ratios and different uh, uh, data size for which data size we have uh, the, the best ratio, so we can find uh, some optimal values um, independent of uh, independence of the, uh, the the size of the out of domain and of in of domain, because we uh, we uh, um, believe that it uh, depends on it, and we uh, also investigate the new words problem or the rare problem in the training sets. That was uh, our presentation, and thank you for the attention. Thank you.